Her story is one of courage and faith. How did you come to know Sai Baba? There came a time in her life when 78-year-old Rukmini Tanikala, Amma, chose to leave the material world, her family and her friends, in order to pursue only Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. For the first time she has seen him. This story is told to soldiers by Amma's daughter, Nagamani Kanduri. And after that, in the year 1984, she just decided on somebody's suggestion that she wanted to stay alone. She wanted to stay alone because alone, all of her family alone. duties were done? Is that it? Uh, yeah. Few people have spiritual purpose. And I'm glad my Amama has taken the spiritual path. Did anybody suspect she had this sort of gumption in her, this ability? Yeah, when people get to talking to her, uh, they might identify, but otherwise she doesn't show it off. We have to talk to her and then we'll, we have to understand the depth. I told her, Amma, the, all these experiences interpret that you, you have got that Kundalini Yoga awakened. This is a very rare experience Swami has given you. Uh, her strong faith in Swami, she's always with Swami and she strongly believes that there is no difference between Swami and her. That's I Swami's and you only are message. one, that is the message Swami's Swami Swami's only message is yes, Advaita, the, only. Is the one He said, that. I separated myself to love myself. Oh, you make me want to cry. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Rukmini Tanikala found lots of time in her quiet years living near Sai Baba to write this book. Printed only in Telugu, it is called The Divine Nectar of Non-Duality. In Non-Duality, in Non-Attachment, Rukmini has found everything. Welcome to Soldiers. This interview was recorded in Hyderabad, India in January 2013. Amma, how did you come to know Sai Baba? Uh, just she attended some meeting in Chennai mm -hmm. for the first time she has seen him in 1982 once. So this is decades ago. Yeah, and uh, 83 once. And after that in the year 1984, she just decided on somebody's suggestion that she wanted to stay alone. At that time, uh, my cousin brother uh, advised her she can stay at Puttaparthi. She wanted to stay alone because alone, all of her family alone. duties were done? Is that it? Uh, yeah, she has discharged everything, all deliveries, everything was over. My brother got married and we lost her father in the year 1974. So she was alone with yeah, no more... Yeah, he was... Uh, he had cardiac arrest. So while sleeping... So her duties were over, Everything she didn't have obligation, no. no husband. No, uh, this is a good point if you are not done. See, at certain days, you know, olden days, kings also, they used to go for this one prasa. Yeah. Saintly life. So if she stays uh, with some children, you know, I will have some responsibility and other will have, she has to go here and there. Yeah. So why unnecessarily? She just wanted to stay alone and uh, have something right. just like that. How beautiful. So tell so, me then what happened when she uh, Then uh, my brother only took her to Puttaparthi mm -hmm. for the first time in the year 1984 on Guru Purnima day. So just one a day. couple of days after, a couple of years after she... Yeah, received. 1984, one day prior to Guru Purnima, she left for Puttaparthi from Chennai along with my brother. Okay. Yeah. So while traveling, you know, she was going by bus. While traveling itself, she started having some sort of visions. And uh, we never know anything and she was not a person to perform all these rituals, uh, pujas and um, all these external things. So something things. big was happening in her life uh, with these visions. Yeah, yeah. So that Swami is uh, taking her uh, into his fold in a very peculiar manner. Very, very peculiar manner. So while reaching Puttaparthi, she had some visions and after that she had uh, she was given very beautiful meaning and uh, she sat for darshan lines uh, on Guru Purnima day. At that time she had the opportunity of taking a token. Mm -hmm. like, like we all do. To yeah, you know that token system, yes. no? She had the number five token. 
Number five. Her yeah. number five line, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Fifth token. So okay. immediately after getting that five number token, she felt as if her four, five lives, you know pancha pranas? Mm, I, I know a little bit. So There's five, five pranas. Uh, so five she, she pancha bhutas. So that's what. Uh, she felt as if everything she got merged in Swami. Wow. Her Atma merged into Paramatma. And she doesn't know what Atma is and what Paramatma <laughs> is. So she really had she is an not, instant uh, baptism she, of fire, didn't she? She doesn't have the, this physical uh, education, records, qualification, she doesn't have. And she never read any sort of spiritual books also. And up to that time, she never read the Gita even. This is very encouraging for a lot of people. Yeah, but her life, life, you know, that was according to Gita. Yeah. It was she lived with all that the virtues, sort of, uh, she yes, lived all the models. Yes. You know that by the 18 virtues Swami wanted for Redolino. You know? And she so had those, them. Yeah. Without going yeah. through all the pujas maybe, and maybe. doing yeah. No, without doing any external puja or anything. Uh, as a homemaker, she did everything. She lived a pious life, simple life. Everything, all those virtues, you know, maybe... God bless Amma. <laughs> <laughs> Only God bless, that's why. Right. So, you know, after that, uh, slowly we understood, you know, after some time, she started uh, uh, listening to the inner voice. She got connected to that inner uh, spirit. Sure. Uh, well, did, did she ever in tell the you, beginning... Did in, she ever tell you what the visions were when she was yeah, coming from yeah, Sinai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were they? Yeah. Well, first, you know, she had all were written in that book. Okay. Uh, well, I see. Just, this, is yeah, not, this is the book. And it's only written uh, in Telugu? Is that, is yeah, it is in Telugu. Okay. You don't have it in English, huh? No. So her stories in Telugu, published yeah, yeah. for the, all the world who speaks Telugu, to understand, <laughs> but not for us who speak another this language. Is, this is uh, titled Advaita Amruta Varshini. So, so tell me from the book then what those visions were that she yeah, had. Yeah, she had uh, very beautiful visions, uh, in number of visions. Uh, the first vision was that while traveling, somebody, some short Negro-like hair person, somebody kept some Lingakaram-like thing. All of a sudden she had that vision. So, and after that, uh, while coming and uh, Puttaparthi Darshan lines also, the ta this taking five number coin, yeah. and after that she felt as if her Atma was merging in Paramatma. And she didn't and even know what Atman was. No, she doesn't that. know those words even. Yeah. Uh, and uh, something, uh, some Pinnanam into Brahmanam, like that something, you know, <coughs> some odd. And while coming from Puttaparthi, she has seen uh, uh, somebody sprinkling vibhuti on that Sanatana Sarathi stupa. Uh -huh. You know that uh, stupa is there uh, so in front stupa. of Prashanti Nilayam. But she didn't even that know what vibhuti was. She probably. doesn't know. She doesn't know that it was Dharma stupa. But Swami yeah. symbolized that uh, Sanatana Dharma. Something, you know, by giving these experiences, by giving this book, you know, that is a spiritual sadhana, Dvaita sadhana. Oh, sure. And she had that Kundalini Yoga, awakening of Kundalini she had a Yoga. Kundalini awakening? Yoga, yes. In the yo uh, yes. So she really. Without her... knowing anything, without reading anything about that yoga. This is an amazing story. Yes. Uh, that Kundalini Yoga, she had uh, in number of visions and experiences. After that, uh, we met uh, one day because she was living with my brother mm -hmm. at in Chennai, Chennai and I am here. In Probably Hyderabad. after this, she wanted to live in Puttaparthi. Yeah. She used to tell few things to me uh, and uh, at that time, Swami, through her, uh, told that I will be blessed uh, with his son. She said she will wear only one type of sari, she won't buy anything like that. And uh, when she was in bathroom, she heard some voice. Do you know who is going to give you clothes? So she so got she... surprised, feared rather. What is it? Some voice I am listening. Whose voice is this? She didn't know. And she came out of the bathroom hurriedly. And she had, I was just in front of the door. It just happened. So she asked me, Mani, do you know who is going to give my clothes? Mm -hmm. Then I said, is that uh, my son? At that time I have only two daughters. I had never planned that I'll be <laughs> going to have a son also. And after that, you know, I used to see something, some specific change in her. Whenever I see, you know, I feel uh, this is not 
our uh, usual amma. Mm -hmm. I know my mother. She, she changed. <laughs> she became a different some person. Some change. She is looking. I said, uh, some, I thought it's not Amma. Something strange. It sounds some like she gave up her attachments. All of her attachments. Yes, of course. After that, uh, she started one day in her dream. Uh, she was told to record all these experiences. I'll show you these things. You record it. Very good. She had that experience. And after that, regarding this Kundalini Yoga, she ha she was having uh, these experiences. And they are uh, maybe confidential or uh, mm -hmm. like uh, so, public. Yeah, Just very private. Very yeah, private. Did she ever that. end up then wanting to wanting to uh, meet Baba or did she ever get in the first no, line? No, that is the beautiful thing here. She was with uh, Baba only in Puttaparthi, she stayed, uh, but ne she never had any interview. But her faith and her yes, confidence about her connection to faith. Baba was strong yes. without that. Unshakable faith. And how long did she stay in Puttaparthi? Uh, since 1999. Until what? Oh. And prior to that, you know, some from 1988, she started living in some, some small room like this. Oh, yeah. In our aunt's place in Mehdi Patnam, here only. For 10 years she lived there. Uh, we used to have contact sometimes, used to come and all. After that, 99 onwards, she's staying there. So only. she probably had Yanni her inner has guidance. Seen that, uh, telling her what to do yeah. and how to find her contentment. Yeah. From that time onwards, whatever <coughs> she has to do, Swami was only guiding. And uh, in the year 1986, uh, I was blessed with this son. Hmm. And meanwhile, so Swami only that. told the name Prem Sai. He should be named as Prem Sai. <laughs> <laughs> so, I met Prem Sai. Yeah. He's a good Prem Sai. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe he'll be associated with that avatar. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know. Well, she, were you surprised that Swami was right? In, uh, the actually, in the her? first visions, you know, she was uh, given indication that four children will be given. Have you had four children? Sa no, no. Not, <laughs> not me. Not me. Satya, Dharma, Shanti, Prema. Well, where is Satya, Dharma and Shanti? Shanti, Prema. This is Prema. Okay. Prem Sai. And afterwards, you know, um, somebody got Satya Sai. And somebody named after Shanti Sai. Oh, so all came. And for this Dharma Sai, you know, Swami made a twist. You are so, a very, very proud daughter of a of beautiful course, mother. Of and so I need to ask you as you continue with <laughs> great course, enthusiasm to tell me the course. story of your mother, you know, actually, how much of this uh, how much of this fell then on to you? Uh, see, see, mother, Matru Devo Bhava, you know, mother is a guru. <coughs> and uh, she happened to be my spiritual guru also. And I used it to follow very keenly what is that. Because I was so shocked and surprised how she is getting all these inner visions, experiences, without having any knowledge, without reading anything. And she was not habituated to uh, go to any pravachanams. Purana, so did discourse. she tell you? No discourse. Yeah. Never. No discourse. So how did you, what Never. kind of an answer did you come up with? Huh? How did you figure out wh how she got all this? Yeah, when I read her uh, all experiences, you know, uh, she recorded. Uh, so after six months I met her in Vaisak. And simultaneously I read one book, you know, you, I don't know whether you can follow that. Sri Vidya is there in uh, Hindu Dharma. Mm -hmm. That is Kundalini Yoga. Yeah. All Shachakras will be there in her own body. And uh, that uh, that is known as Sri Vidya, Kundalini Yoga. So all while crossing those Shachakras, she had uh, all miraculous experiences. Now I want to interrupt for one second and catch uh, the people up to date with why we're here. Hmm. Uh, my, my good buddy Gianni Bailey is over here too. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember, we get so much great emails from Sai devotees whose lives have been completely transformed by Sai Baba. Uh, so just another see, story or two see, about your mother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I told her, Amma, the, all these experiences interpret that you, you have got that Kundalini Yoga awakened. This is a very rare experience Swami has given you. And by that time, she is only connected to that uh, uh, inner voice. Yeah. So all instructions, everything, you know, whenever she prays for something, she's getting that answer. And all visions, you know, they were uh, very divinely interpreted by Swami. 
So if you have that language, you know, if somebody reads that language, you know, everybody says that that is not our language. Mm -hmm. So if she so. has this connection to Swami, yeah, yeah. My guess is, and any of us who had that deep connection to Swami would be content with a room the size of a closet because all of our adventure and love and happiness and joy comes on the inner journey and that doesn't require any he, big room. See, all throughout his avatar's uh, period, I should not say life and all uh, when this attributing to Swami. Yeah. So, during his incarnation, Swami was preaching the same thing. Over you try to listen your inner voice. Yeah. That is uh, called in Telugu Antarvani, mm -hmm. inner voice. So when we are deeply involved and we have got that strong faith and all, we can live in this world as uh, Krishna preached Arjuna, but uh, without uh, attachment and all. You're a very, so very wise you. daughter. Five minutes and we'll be done. Yeah. Hey, okay, din, pillow. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to ask... Uh, one minute. Uh, yes, go ahead. So meanwhile, you know, uh, in the year... Uh, so I was blessed with this boy. Uh -huh. And uh, we were just thinking that Swami, one day or the other, will give her clothes through my son. Like that. After that, this uh, Shanti, Prema, Satya. Yeah. Whatever she told, to whomever she told, you know. That she was given some these uh, Siddhis also. She was? These powers? Yes, powers. What no, kind of powers does she know. have? <laughs> 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 no, somebody, some, that is atmic power. Uh -huh. Not like a prophecy or uh, right. this horoscope telling, it's not yeah. like that. Yeah. Through her uh, power of inner spirits, she'll tell something. That uh, it was uh, materialized. So we had some sort of experience like that. But after that one day, she cried like anything. Swami, I don't want all these things. I want only your feet, your mm -hmm. feet only. I how, don't want to see this. How did she do when Swami that. left his physical form? Yeah, naturally she felt uh, bad, but you know, when she has here, the, yeah, and that's the that's the, the first. Now also she is staying there only. Just tomorrow she is leaving. Actually, Swami planned like she's this. going back to Puja Park. Yeah, tomorrow. Swami planned this, I'm sure, because <laughs> I didn't even know we were Actually, coming until the Actually, we night. were to meet yesterday, mm -hmm. but today. And I was worried whether you'll be tired uh, yeah. and how you'll yeah. be. And these are the inner um, uh, voice listening, inner experiences, this is just insight. A tremendous uh, story. I'm, I'm uh, this every is part. what Swami was preaching all through yeah. his uh, incarnation so, so, period. Uh, uh, and, again, uh, let's review the ages. Her, your mother's age now is 70, 77. Seven, you're 77. 1935. And in 1985, born, this mm -hmm. all started, right? Yes, so she was a relatively young people. woman. Yeah. Her husband had died, the family was raised, yeah. she had no yes. more responsibilities, and Baba just lifted her up and transported her yes. with no previous knowledge, no she, previous understanding. She, she put a question to God, one person while just sitting. At this age, uh, who is going to be my company like that? Uh, who is going to be with me? God only has come. And uh, see, my brother is there, my brother, my sister-in-law. They're staying in Delhi, he has two sons. He's very well settled businessman. We are, have all got good relations. We don't have anything, uh, see, we need not uh, uh, run away from the world, from yeah. the society. Yeah. While uh, discharging our duties, we can just get into. So this is all uh, we have learned from Amma. And when she got into Swami's fold, you know, uh, n number of our family members, you know, all our brothers people. and uh, our sisters, all uh, our people. They have and, and even though Swami's sport, physical uh, form is no longer here, she uh, chooses to live in Prashanti Nelia? Yeah, there only. Yeah. She's happy there only. Is she inside or outside of the ashram? Outside, outside. the ashram. And uh, outside very close to the Ganesh She'll gate? cook for herself. Does she go often to the Sunday? Mandir, you know? Yeah. Not uh, very frequently because she'll see him here. <coughs> always her inner uh, dhana mm -hmm. only. So she has a full time relationship Every, with Swami. Uh, all that she's she never lonely. Been. She's never no. lacking for no, a friend. No, 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 she's no. never lacking for distractions no. and things to no. do. No, no, no. She not doesn't get bored. No. 
<laughs> no. I think because this is... all the time she's connected to Swami. Yeah. Her prayer, her sadhana is to cry for Swami. And that she would happen to be you know, <laughs> like Radha. You see, I didn't even know we were going to be doing this. <laughs> even Gandhi didn't know we were going to do an interview until about an hour ago. <laughs> and I wasn't so sure what to expect because <laughs> this is this this trip we've done over 42 soldiers interviews. And I'm too old to keep all the facts straight, so I'm very confused about who we've seen and who we haven't seen. And so I had no expectations, and this is turning out to be one of the most beloved side stories yes. I think anybody could ever hear, yeah. because of your mother's faith, yes. not having a lot of teaching, book knowledge, no. or understanding no, of religion, not any that, religion. No, she used to listen to the radio. Morning, some beautiful uh, sayings will come. Even then, suktulu and us. Suktas. Suktas. She used to listen to that. Sutras, yes. Yeah, that she used to follow. She used to follow. And sutras. Uh, she doesn't have any belief in any particular faith or anything. So simply, like a white paper, you know, yeah. you can write anything on that. Sure, sure. So this she doesn't a, have any past impression. This is so helpful yeah, to so many people. Yes. There are people who come from yes. very steep, very involved technical yes. and religious backgrounds, and there are people who come from zero backgrounds. Yes. They're white papers, like yes. you said. Yes. Both can find solace in this interview. Yes and yes. hope for themselves. Our only intention is uh, to just she prayed, uh, Swami will take uh, everything, he will take care of everything. Does she have any doubt? <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. Because, you know, in India, just please pardon me, yeah. uh, see, if somebody is having this sort of experiences and all, there is no much appreciation. There's no what? Much appreciation. What's that? Not much appreciation. Oh, not much appreciation. appreciation. Yeah. yeah, it's a very solitary journey. <laughs> you have so, to you yes. have to not count on other people. Yeah. How she can have this sort of experiences, how she can get the awakening of Kundalini, and how she can listen to that inner voice, all doubts, yeah. like, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, her strong faith in Swami, She's always with Swami and she strongly believes that there is no difference between Swami and her. That's I Swami's and you only are message. one. That is the message. Swami's Swami. only message is yes, Advaita. The only. Is the one he said, I separated myself to love myself. Oh, you make me want to cry. This is so beautiful. <laughs> so many of us who call really? ourselves side devotees are on such so, a serious journey yes. and feel and like we're treading water, not going anywhere. Yeah. And we meet somebody called your mother, Amma, mm -hmm. who Swami put on a jetliner and took her out of this cosmos <laughs> to teach her the spiritual yes. lessons yes. that we all pine she for. She never hesitates to say, if you can understand Telugu, she will say, I am Swami, I am Swami. Sai and me or one. That is the highest principle of Advaita. Even Lord Sankara preached the same. But Advaita is not anything separated from the Hindu Dharma. Right. It is uh, the, see, Karma, Bhakti, Jnana, Vairagya, everything. All should be mixed up. All should be mixed up. There is no separate Jnana. There is no separate Bhakti. There is no separate Karma. If Why she's Swami, and I know she's Swami, <laughs> would you ask Swami, Amma, <laughs> to bless us who came definitely, here tonight? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. He will have her blessing. And meanwhile, Swami, what uh, he did, you know, uh, my cousin, he met with some accident. Ah. Somebody gave him to read some English book, Loving God, written by Kasturi. You know, yes, yes. and Kasturi. <coughs> so... Is this Actually, the book that Kasturi interviewed Baba? Loving God, Loving God. Is this the one where he interviewed Baba? I'm not sure. No, no, no. Sure that is no, the N. Kasturi's so. book, okay. Loving God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm not that much fluent in English, uh -huh. you know. I was Oh, uh, you're very up. fluent in English. <laughs> no, <laughs> not like You just so. did a half an hour interview <laughs> in flawless English. I see. I was yeah. born in interior Andhra, Guntur district mm -hmm. there. And uh, our education was in Telugu medium. And only after coming here, and maybe while doing these translations and all, maybe slowly, slowly I got it. Well, that's that so great. Doing yeah. Actually, one uh, one part, one pair of that one one incident in that book, Loving God. Uh, I told you, Amma had some part to tell something, yeah. forecast something like that. At that time, she said some marriage she predicted, 
बिफोर मार्च इट विल बी परफॉर्म लाइक दैट शी सेड देन आई हैपन टू रीड दिस लविंग गॉड एक्चुअली विल बी सरप्राइज आई कुंट अंडरस्टैंड द फर्स्ट फिफ्टी सिक्सटी पेजेस because uh, that language uh, he his language is a madras presidency is a mm-hmm. freelance uh, journalist very high language after that uh, uh, how he has come into swami school then i wanted to know and from uh, from the middle of the book i started then i have seen his daughter's marriage and all <coughs> incident. that incident because amma doesn't know english i translated in telugu I don't know this job actually. Yes, Prashanti is doing transcription. That time in the year 1988, I wrote a letter to Amma. Just uh, Amma, see how this has happened. Uh-huh. Swami made it possible. See, this is a wonderful instinct. After that, you know, some instinct came, some intuition uh, to do this. Everything to write in Telugu. So uh, I translated that book, Loving God. So then uh, Swami didn't receive it, but. he made me to translate another book satyam sivan sundaram part 4 you translated that yeah, one part 4 into telugu yes my goodness what what amazing story so, you know i'm going to end this with a comment from you uh-huh. how did swami through your mother uh-huh. transform your life because you grew up totally. without totally what's that totally <laughs> <laughs> Well, you must have had a good life before because your mother's a saint. She's a wonderful, beautiful person. Uh-huh. If so before she knew Swami, which meant before you knew Swami. But you will be surprised to know we used to keep Swami's photo secretly uh-huh. because my father-in-law was not yeah. interested. But after that, you know, slowly Swami makes everybody just to come into Swami's fold. I met Dr. Kakade. I don't know whether you know him or not. uh he's he research here only barkatpura geeta narsing home well, he wrote a beautiful book shirdi to putparthi very amazing transformation is a best doctor and uh, well we all have a long way to grow when it comes to being strong in our faith for swami yeah. i for a long long time would only wear my baba ring that way and only in several years ago that i start to wear it for the whole world to see because of my own fear and trepidation yes. we all have to learn to overcome that yeah. and to be strong in the knowledge that your mother has mm. that she is swami which means baba uh, what i learned yeah unshakable faith unshakable faith it makes everything you know possible. when it becomes unshakable faith it goes beyond faith she even in difficult faith. she has knowledge she has She has you know the awareness the knowledge of baba essence as her own and that goes way beyond faith that transcends uh, somebody if, uh, anybody can translate those beautiful experiences in english you know you will definitely like that well you thank you so much like let me ask you to ask your mother one question right now uh, tell her yeah. go yeah. ask your mother who is sai baba <laughs> sai baba ante ever one adutunna బాబాకి నాకు తేడా లేదు ఎవరు కాదన్నా she says there is no difference between swami and me ee sharira i imagine in swami only body is here i know it is body is there but ee sharira only to you ante sadhana ki kavali value the sadhana ayipoyindi i'm glad i asked the question i'm getting a lot of answers but she's saying no go ee matcha she just uh, gets melted in me she thinks of swami that is the cry for swami that only made him dearest <laughs> Thank you so much. We love you, Amma. Baba ante manami. Baba is us. Baba is us. Baba ante manami. God bless you. Thank you so much. Now you bless us. Okay? Amma gandani divinchu mantu. Kachchidanga. Surely. Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and uh, Rita Bruce book uh, that trust convener. Uh-huh. He uh, after uh, getting these books printed loving god and uh, the satyam sevan sundaram part 4 he gave me few books and later on they were also published here by prasanthi publications 
and they'll take permission and they'll keep in the such a site. Such, such a beautiful family. That's how I translated uh, Rita's uh, vision of site too. And when I met her, she asked me, Swami told you to do the second version and uh, you do first one for me, she asked. Oh. <laughs> <It's really> wonderful. <laughs> Sai Ram, thank you most very, very much. I'm so happy it worked out that we are here and right now. And the very beautiful experiences are there. Uh, I can't pick one or two, you know, hundreds and thousands of experiences, yeah, yeah. she said. Well, we want to do this very again. Beautifully. You'll have to come to Pushanti. One Pushanti. second. Yes. Mm, one second. I'm going to walk to Japan and translate this chapter. What's that? Would you ask her? One, one beautiful vision she had. Okay. You know, this uh, snake lives in that uh, hermit body. They put the name on the Snake hermit. pit. Snake pit, yeah. Snake pit. Ah, that she has seen. In, I mean, in a vision? In a vision. The that, snake pit. Okay. Uh, she and has the snakes seen that. are, it will go back uh, thousands of years in uh, Greek, I mean, in uh, Indian mythology as God. Yes, yeah, snake god. This Kundalini <coughs> also, Kundalini also, it's a symbol of that snake. That's right, it's there, a serpent yeah. coiled at yeah, the base. Serpent will be like this. And uh, that will be, yeah. uh, so, so from here it should be awakened and, uh, and uh, two, two beautiful interpretations I want to tell you in mm -hmm. this. But she had a vision of the snake ah, vision of coil. this uh, snake pit, uh, the okay. uh, snake pit. hunter and hermit, uh, you know, something. A snake house. Snake <laughs> house, maybe, <laughs> snake house. Uh, and uh, one uh, peacock, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, with all this thing, uh, yeah. she it danced for some time and it, uh, got burnt in fire. See, it got burnt in fire. Fire. After that, in this uh, snake house, it was melted by the rain. And uh, one lady has come and uh, distributed sweets there. Can you interpret anything from this? Can you make out any meaning in this? Whenever I think of this vision, you know, I just uh, get mad how Swami describes well, what's your inter What's your interpretation? I'll tell you. Not my interpretation, Swami's interpretation. Okay. How Swami told her, you know, this peacock is the desires in a man. The peacock. Desires Flashy, in a man, you know, ego, like ego, all of our worst you know, qualities. It spreads all its uh, feathers yeah. and all it dances, no? Like the desires in a person will uh, um, make persons dance like that. Yeah. And when the, all those desires, so that peacock burnt in that jnana, fire of jnana, mm -hmm. Fire of jnana. Then this this body is uh, burned uh, away. Body is uh, simply with the uh, earth, no? Mm -hmm. But prithvi. Earth. It's made up of earth. This okay, body, right. you know, it gets melted by the uh, divine uh, blessings of Bhagwan when we have that uh, uh, God's blessings. Uh -huh. And then uh, distributing of sweets is. When we attend that jnana, our words will be like sweets. How oh, nice. What a beautiful interpretation. Because Sweet our word words are the sweets. Only love. Words that, of love. Yeah, that lady is uh, jnana, amma, goddess, parasakti. That's great. That's just so Can beautiful. we imagine this sort of things? No, we know? can't imagine it. It's beyond words. One day she had a doubt. <laughs> Swami, always I am talking to you. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Are you listening to me? She and had a question. And then she had a vision. One elephant, you know, it's uh, moving its ears okay. like this. Uh -huh. Like this. That's the then uh, she didn't understand <coughs> that, uh, that significance. Mm -hmm. Then Swami said, you ask me one question, whether I'm listening to you or not. Uh, then uh, I'm listening to you. That's a symbolized <laughs> thing. And uh, Swami, uh, important thing I want to tell you, Swami said that my son will give her clothes, you know. So she was doing her sadhana with that uh, protection. So after few years, in the year 1995, one day she was cooking food for a lunch she's made. When Swami said, stop it and write what I'm telling. Oh my goodness. Then he said, see, uh, these clothes are for the body. When it is limited to a person, but when the God is all pervading, God is omnipresent. This linga symbolizes the pervadeness of Bhagavan. Paramatma is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It is pervaded in everything. God is everywhere. 
for that uh, parabrahman you can't give any cloth so consciousness that only is the cloth that only you should wear not physical clothing this sari and all he <coughs> said that after that again in the year 2004 he said uh, the weaver he bhagwan is the weaver and uh, with the threads of love he he himself woven the cloth of gnana uh, that prakasham uh, that light represents what should i say that is uh, the vastram par her cloth par her and this uh, cloth given by god this gnana this gnana vastram you know it will not be dried it won't get wet it won't be stolen by anybody and you know the price of this vairagyam detachment you have to give all those up see can anybody who doesn't have any knowledge of the spiritual uh, this terminology and all can anybody write like this only no. swami speaks only swami can swami she said no training no background nothing. no understanding not at all <laughs> Well, Not I call this all. a true miracle story. Not at all. A miracle yeah. is a story that changes your and mind. And you should know the end of the story. Okay, also. tell me the end. <laughs> see, every she, part of it is wonderful. See, Swami left the body, and we are all confused. He promised that he'll be given clothes by my son. How it's going to happen? <coughs> One day she has. <coughs> <coughs> Eddie. He's made not a lot of promises. He promised he had changed my wedding ring from silver and gold to all gold. He promised he would see my wife and I on the 14th when we met him on the 9th. He promised us eight times. So we keep waiting for the 14th. Your son, I'm sure, keeps waiting. No, that happened last November 17th. Okay. November 17th, he was in Ayappa Diksha, that black clothes wearing Ayappa Puja. He was doing like a bachelor, uh, some 40 mm -hmm. days puja. And uh, she had hints even prior to that, uh, some light coming from Ayappa photo and all. Some indications you will have and later on it gets materialized. And uh, she was given some indications then. Uh -huh. On November 17th, last uh, 2012 yeah. we had that ayappa puja on that day uh, my son gave sari to her so till then she so never he... purchased any sari and uh, uh, you carefully listen this but swami said my son is going to give her clothes and she is swami give, and she is swami yeah my son gave so i did carefully listen and that's exactly what uh, happened not swami directly giving clothes but through my son yeah, yeah. she was given clothes oh. and till such time all these 30 years she never purchased any sarees and all <laughs> only two she used to wear and she used to live how much that. do you love your mother <laughs> is there any definition for that <laughs> But fun. what I feel, you know, I am the replica of my mother. I want to be. Which like makes you one of the luckiest persons who walks the earth today. <laughs> one of the most. Because loved. of her, you know, I yeah. could come to Swami's world. Oh, you She could... came at the age of 40, and we came at the age of 20, 25, yeah, like yeah. that. And our children, you know, even prior to that, she could. They she could came come at the to. age of 40. Yeah. And she took a jet ride through the universe. Yes. To total understanding yes. of who yes. she is. Yes. God bless you both. This is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you Sairam, Sairam, Sairam. Thank you. Prema Sai Raghuram. Prema Sai. I'm so happy to be able to talk with you especially standing beside your ama, your your grandmother. Just a few words about how her love, her progress on the spiritual path has rubbed off on the whole family on your mother and on you. More than spiritual, I would say she has taught us many practical things like she used to donate 10% of whatever she earns to the needy does she? that she is doing from past 30 years we have a take away everyone uh, living has a take away from that she used to do it when she used to earn like peanuts when she used to earn very less 250 per the amount month. doesn't matter does it it doesn't matter but she used to do it very religiously she has been doing it from past 40 years huh. if i can do it half as much I think yeah. Uh, yeah. I've done a lot. And how do you, if you had to describe to a coworker, to a friend, to a neighbor, to a stranger, how your grandmother left everything behind with no training and no understanding, and made this leap into this big void of what appears to be nothing, zero attachments, they might think, 
they might think that she's strange. How would you explain it to them? Yeah, I mean, few people have purpose. Few people have worldly purpose. Few people have spiritual purpose. And I'm glad my Amama has taken the spiritual path. Did anybody suspect she had this sort of gumption in her, this ability? Yeah, when people get to talking to her, uh, they might identify, but otherwise she doesn't show it off. We have to talk to her and then we'll, we have to understand the depth. And, and one last question, because it's a very important question. Every time I talk to people about Sai Baba, who don't know really much about Sai Baba, they don't understand our attachment, our interest in him, and they always ask, well, has he changed you? So let me ask you, has Sai Baba transformed you in any small amount? I want to re reiterate the same thing. No, uh, I did not de get direct inspiration from Baba. It was through my Amama. So, not directly from Baba, but yes, uh, from whatever she learned from Sai Baba, she preached to us and I find it as a meaningful learning. And the final question is, do you know how unusual your family is to have a matriarch who's had such direct, unmistakable, life-changing direction from Sai Baba? We feel we are lucky and blessed and uh, we hope we also imbibe some of her uh, good work. Very good. Sai Ram. Thank you, Sai Ram. Sri Vakratunda Mahakaya Koti Surya Samaprabha Nirvikyam Kurume Deva Shubhakareshu Sarvada Sri Vakratunda Mahakaya Koti Surya Samaprabha